Angela Rabate, a young single mother giving her all for the child who is number one in her heart. She would do whatever it took to provide for Shay, whatever it took, regardless. Trying hard to make ends meet as a model and dancer in the Atlanta club scene. She had a natural beauty to her, and it seemed to come almost second nature what she did. She really had hit her stride. She was really about to take off. But she makes a major misstep the night she has a run-in with a killer. And a single bullet brings all of her dreams to a sudden and tragic end. She was shot in the back of the head, execution style. That's not an accident. That's malice murder. And she could always make you smile, no matter what. And he robbed us all of that. Atlanta, Georgia. It's become the new mecca for the entertainment business. And Angela Rabate is making a big name for herself with promises of more to come. She wanted to make the most out of it. She was exploring other avenues. She was the model for a book cover. She was doing magazine covers. It's an exciting but sometimes dangerous life. A dancer in this line of work can make thousands of dollars in a single evening. And Angela has become so popular, she started carrying a handgun around for protection. And there's going to be a lot of undesirable people that are involved in that, typically. But this dancing girl has a side that her fans don't get to see for any price. She is the committed, hardworking mother of three-year-old Shay. And she's in an on-and-off-again relationship with a child's dad, Daryl Campbell. They did not work out good as a couple. It, it, they definitely would have their moments. I don't know that I would say that their relationship was contentious, but they just, they both had their tempers. According to police, Angela drops Shay with a babysitter on an early spring night, and then she gets a ride from a friend to dance at a private party at an upscale hotel in Midtown Atlanta. The event stretches into the wee hours of the following morning and moves to a private home north of the city. Police say Angela finally calls her longtime friend Charles Outlaw to come and pick her up and get her back home on the other side of town. Charles Outlaw was somebody that Angie knew as a mid-teenager, 15, 16, I think. Um, he'd been a friend of their whole little group. But when Angela doesn't check in on Shay that night, the babysitter becomes alarmed. She alerts Angela's mother, Judy Rabate, who immediately tries to get in touch with her daughter. When I got a phone call that she hadn't checked on her daughter, I knew something was wrong. If I sent her a text, she would answer me. If I sent her, or if I called her, she would call me. She would have responded to me. Um, so I knew instantly something was not right. A furious round of calls and texts are fired off as friends and family try to locate Angela. They're so worried that they organize a search party to look for her without even waiting for police. Angela's old friend, Charles Outlaw, is clearly the last known person to see her alive. He's with the search party on the first day of their hunt for Angela. But he tells Detective Colin Flynn the last ride with Angela was anything but easy going. After he picked up Angela that night, that he was complaining to her that he had to drive all the way to the other end of the city to get her. And Charles tells the detective they argued for most of the ride home. She began to tell him that she didn't need him, that there were plenty of other men that were willing to come and pick her up and give her rides to places. Charles says he makes a stop at his girlfriend's house and leaves Angela alone in the car. But when Charles gets back, he says she is nowhere to be seen. So he assumed that she either got up, was angry and walked away, or that she had called somebody else to pick her up. And he did relay to me that she was texting to other men the entire car ride back from the other end of the city. But Detective Flynn says Charles's demeanor is suspicious and that he also admits to dealing drugs. And he has a warrant out for a probation violation. Detective Flynn makes the arrest on the spot when Outlaw shows up for day two of the search party. I put the first handcuff on him and he immediately tried to take off running. And I had to actually physically tackle Mr. Outlaw to the ground and uh, place him into handcuffs. I was also able to locate that he had some narcotics on him as well. But there's another unanswered question hanging over the case, dating from the very first day of the search. Where is Daryl Campbell, the father of Angela's baby? It's always a big red flag when people who are supposed to be close to your missing person don't show up. Friends and family keep up the frantic search for Angela Rabate. 
I know in my heart of hearts something is not right. She hasn't called, she hasn't texted, she's not picked up her daughter. The popular dancer and model has mysteriously gone missing and Detective Colin Flynn is stumped. I fielded a lot of phone calls from people who said that they knew her or knew of her business and said that they were concerned because it just was not like her to just disappear. First, Flynn wants to know more about Charles Outlaw, the last person to see Angela after he says they argued in his car. He's already been arrested by the detective for probation violation on a separate case. I got the impression from him while speaking with him that uh, he wanted something more in, from the relationship than what she was willing to uh, provide to him. However, every time I would ask him directly, did you want to be romantically involved with Angela? He would tell me no. Flynn has Charles Outlaw walk him through every second from the moment he says he stopped to pick something up at his girlfriend's house. He told us that he parked his car here in this parking lot and left Angela inside the car while he decided to walk to his girlfriend's house. And then as he came through the walkway, he entered into this trail. He led me down this trail until we eventually got further into the woods back here and walked approximately a quarter mile into these woods, deeper into these woods in the middle of the night with seemingly nowhere, nowhere to really know exactly where he was going. So it just seemed very odd and suspicious at the time. And again, Outlaw tells the detective that when he returns to the car, Angela is gone. It could mean anything from her leaving in anger to being kidnapped or worse. There's a lot of buildings in this general area that somebody could have come out where Angela could have gone to. Uh, there's also a big parking lot here where somebody could have easily just pulled their car into. And there's also a major roadway right here to the left that Angela could have gotten out on and tried to hitch a ride to leave. So there was a lot of different options on where she could have gone. And uh, I had to figure out where to start from that point. And then there's Daryl Campbell, the father of Angela's adorable three-year-old daughter, Shay. For some reason unknown to police, he's totally absent on the first day when all her family and friends are out searching for her. When I got out on the scene that night, he was, always, he was obviously a person of interest because he was somebody that did not show up to the original search party. Detective Flynn wants an explanation. And so does Crime Watch Daily. We tracked down Campbell and convinced him to face our cameras for his first interview on national television. Just listen to how he says he got the news that Angela had disappeared. Two days after she went missing, that's when I learned through uh, Facebook. A friend messaged me and let me know that she was missing. He's talking about the same day the first search party begins, when even police are surprised to hear about it. She said, your baby mother's missing, where's your daughter? And so I was like, uh, what do you mean? She said, it's missing posters made up on Facebook. I didn't drive. I didn't have a car at the time. Um, they didn't tell me that they were going to search. They were just telling me that we all meeting up here. And um, it wasn't like an organized search through the detectives or anything like that. But Daryl says the reality starts to sink in. It definitely left me with an empty, a real empty feeling. I couldn't eat. I lay in the same spot until the next day. I knew something was wrong, for sure. So the next day, that's when I got ready and went to the search. That was day two, and Daryl comes face to face with the last person to see Angela, Charles Outlaw, and Campbell wants answers. You're the last person that she was seen with, so where is she at? Because my daughter's gonna start asking for her mom real soon. The detectives kinda got between us because the girls, they got kinda scared because we were about to fight. Police narrow their search for anyone involved in the baffling disappearance of Angela Rabate. After looking closely at Daryl Campbell, the father of Angela's child, he's clear. Cops now have this man, Charles Outlaw, under the microscope. Well, as a homicide detective, we're lied to almost on a daily basis. So the number one thing that really stood out to me was the fact that he just couldn't get a story completely straight. It wasn't a cohesive story that he was telling me of somebody that was trying to recall events exactly as they happened. They listened to tapes of disturbing phone calls Outlaw makes to a woman, a friend of his, in prison. Not long before, he was arrested after a search warrant was executed by Detective Flynn on an unrelated charge. I've been going through a lot of that's been happening on the daily. It's a lot that, that like, you're not even understanding because you don't know about that I'm dealing with. 
Before Outlaw was even arrested, he was making phone calls to his uh, girlfriend where he was telling her that he had a big story to tell her, that she was going to be mad at him. Was something bad? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's bad. To make things worse for Outlaw, a friend of Angela's tells police he sees Outlaw at a car wash on the morning after her disappearance. They were really cleaning out the trunk and really doing a lot of work on the inside of the vehicle, vacuuming it out and scrubbing it down. It was a Dodge Dart, the same car he told police in which he was driving with Angela. But here's the problem with that. Charles was driving a rental car. Who details a rental car? To take a rental car and to have it detailed at such a great length was very suspicious. Then, a tragic development in the case six days after Angela goes missing. A team of city surveyors makes a gruesome discovery in a field five miles from where Charles says he parked and left Angela in the car. It's Angela, dead in the tall grass, killed with a single shot to the back of the head. A group of workers came to the property here to work. And as they parked their vehicle right here and walked about 20 feet back onto the property, they discovered Angela's body laying in a, a group of pine straw. Angela's family and friends are inconsolable. We're all hysterically upset. Um, even without confirmation, we all know. He escorted me over there, and they had a chaplain. And you already know what they're going to tell you. So I don't hear the words anymore. And I just lean on my daughter and crying. And police say things look increasingly bad for Charles Outlaw. Because even though he spent all that time carefully scrubbing his rental car for who knows what, he may have left behind the final piece to the puzzle. Police found out that there was gunshot residue on the interior roof of his car. A gunshot had gone off inside the vehicle. But is it enough to get a confession? To really drive in that final nail, police will have to go undercover. Remember that woman Outlaw was already talking to on the phone while she was in prison? She's out now, and Charles Outlaw is in jail on a charge unrelated to Angela's disappearance. This time, investigators get her to visit him behind bars, and she's wired. In that conversation, he doesn't come out and audibly say what happened. Uh, Mr. Outlaw was a a paranoid person, as you can imagine most drug dealers are. He was worried about law enforcement, worried about being recorded. So he wouldn't say anything out loud, but what he would do was take pauses where, according to his girlfriend, he would act out and mouth to her uh, what exactly happened. And it's a shocker. That handgun Angela carried for protection, police say it may have had the opposite result. What he said to her was that they were driving in the car, they were arguing, she pulled a gun. I don't believe that he thought she intended to use it, but she was um, somewhat of being a tough girl, which she was known to be. Um, he took the gun from her, put it to the back of her head, and as Outlaw said, it just went off. We know from talking to the medical examiner that it was a contact execution style wound, not a situation where it would be likely that the gun just went off. Investigators say the gun has never been recovered, but say the small caliber wound fits the description that Angela's friends had given of the weapon. Cops claim Charles Outlaw had fooled no one by acting out the crime. Even though those statements by Outlaw can't be heard on the recording, it's important to note that his girlfriend came out of that conversation knowing details about the way Angela died that were never released to media and that she should not have known. She knew exactly where on Angela's body uh, the gunshot uh, occurred, where the wound was. Outlaw told her that he was surprised that there was very little blood, um, which would have been uh, correct with that kind of wound. The outlaw described to her that Angela, after being shot, just slowly slumped forward, which is exactly how the medical examiner said it would have happened. Prosecutors put their case together, and Charles Outlaw was arrested and charged with the murder of Angela. Malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony and concealing a body. But the case has one more big stumbling block. In a huge disappointment for Angela's bereaved family and friends, testimony is barely begun before the judge declares a mistrial. It was an audio recorded statement of Mr. Outlaw uh, where something that he said that some jurors may have thought um, negatively impacted his character, one or two words here, did make it in 
Um, and ultimately, I think the judge uh, made the right call in granting a mistrial. Incredibly, the prosecution gets this case to trial again in only seven days in front of a new jury. Five days later, that jury writes the end of the story for a defendant who could never get his story straight to begin with. Uh, we uncovered a message that he had sent uh, to someone saying that he was going to beat these charges because he was capable of selling fairy tales to Cinderella. And fortunately, what we had on our jury was a lot of folks with common sense and no Cinderellas, and they did ultimately find him guilty. Convicted and sentenced to life without parole plus 15 years in a Georgia state prison. He murdered my daughter, and he can spend the rest of his life in prison for it. How can somebody take such a beautiful life? How can you do that from all the friends, the family that loved her? Because they she could always make you smile, no matter what. And he robbed us all of that. And Daryl is now a single dad with a daughter of his own to raise. The thing I miss most about Angela is her being able to be a mom to our daughter. Someday, when she's ready, he says he'll tell Shay the whole story about why her mom, who loved her little girl so deeply, is not there. I'll just let her know that she passed away and that she's in heaven. And she asks questions like, um, well, can we go to heaven? I want to go to heaven so I can be with my mom. And, and it really hurts to hear stuff like that. 